Look at, uh, we're going to go to Luke chapter 5, starting with verse 1. I'm just going to read the first uh, six verses. It's 5 through 11, but we, uh, verses 1 through 11, but we just going to read the first six for now. <clears throat> In Luke it says this, And it came to pass, that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. And Simon answered, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. We pray that the word, we know that the word of the Lord is blessed. Lord, that let the meditation of my heart and the words that you've given to me, let them be prosperous in, in us today, tonight, Lord. Let them grow, flourish, and produce. Your word has truly been a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. We thank you for that. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I want to thank our musicians once again. I appreciate that. The subject is take Christ at his word. Take Christ at his word. Take him at his word. How many of y'all know somebody that y'all just don't trust? The minute they tell you something, you say, that, that ain't going to happen. That, that, that. You see, he's just like a rug. He always lying. And we know people like that. We know people that, you know, we tell them, and we, we be so sincere looking in the face, and you say, all right, okay, yeah, all right. And as soon as you walk away, you say, they ain't going to do that. You can't, they, they don't have a word that you can trust. And for what, the, the reason why, because you have seen evidence of them, You've heard them speak, you've heard them give you promises, and they didn't keep none of them. And they always had an excuse for it. So our question is not can Christ be trusted, but can we take him at his word? The weight is upon us, not upon him. Because he's proven, proven himself time and time again that he, he is trustworthy. And, and when, I, when, I, when I read this, this, this passage, I said, it, the way it opened up, and it came to pass that as the people pressed him, I said it opened up with people just coming after him. Here is where Jesus calls his disciple, Peter, James, and John. And they opened up with him, him just the people pressing him. So you have to look in chapter 4, and, and when you get your time, you can read that. It, it opened up, you know how chapter 4 opened up? That Jesus is brought into the wilderness for 40 days, fasting. And when he come out, guess what? Satan is there tempting him, and, and he goes through the temptation. So he, he, he goes through that for 40 days. You see that? And he being tempted of the devil. But the Bible says he was full of the Spirit. And being full of the Spirit, guess what? He comes out out of that, that, that place. And we know he said he turned, he would turn his bread into Turn these stones into bread and you can eat. And Jesus kept giving him the word, kept giving him the word, kept giving him the word. So then he comes to the point where he said, well, I'm going to go read the word. He goes into Nazareth and he, he, he get, goes into the synagogue and he picks up the book. And he opened it to the scripture of Isaiah. And most of us that read, read our Bible, you, we know that scripture. It says, that's in uh, 4, 18 and 19. This is what it says. He says, and the spirit of the Lord 
was upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set, he has set me, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He took the book and he handed it back to the minister. But he did something else. He said, he, he, he sat down and then he said, today, in verse 21, today, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And that upset the people in the church. Not so much that he read the scripture, but where he sat. You got to know, in, in those days, they've been looking for the Messiah. So in the synagogues, you know what they would do? They would put a chair. And nobody was to sit in that chair because that chair was for the Messiah when he come. And Jesus read this book and go sit in that chair, and them boys went off. He said, aren't you Joseph? That's, that's Joseph's son? And, and he, he said, in, in, in that chair? And Jesus went on to explain. He said, yeah, I, I, that was healing before. Uh, there was a lot of people uh, uh, in Elijah's day that had leprosy, but he ain't, he ain't healed but one, Naaman. He said that was a, a, a that was a big famine in the in the line, in the land. Elijah didn't go but to one widow. He made sure that she got fed. He said, but I'm here to set at liberty all. He said, I'm here to feed all those that are hung. and they couldn't accept that. So when he come, he, when he gets into uh, uh, they, they tried to run him off the cliff. He gets away, but the people, he kept teaching. He set a man with demons, he set him free. So now when he gets into to chapter five, this is what he said. He says, and the people pressed him to hear the word. I got a question. When the last time you pressed to hear the word? This, this is our Tuesday crowd, this is the pressing crowd. This is this the pressing crowd. Because you see, when he say press, that means you got to go through something, that something is coming against you. And they press Jesus. Jesus say, I, I'm taught, now I'm leaving. But guess what? They follow. Have you ever had a child that followed you because they wanted something? When we come here, them little kids, can I have it now, mom? Can I get it now? After a while. How long is it after a while? In a few minutes. It been a few minutes? Oh, here. Because you know what? They're going to keep pressing. That's what these people would do. After they heard Jesus before, they say, we got to hear him again. Now, that word here in, 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 in verse 5, he said they wanted to hear. That, I ain't going to try to pronounce that word, but it's A-K-O-U-O. -O. But that word here means to hear, to listen with the ear of the mind. He said, with the ear of the mind. Because you know what? These, these preachers had been preaching before. They had been going to the synagogue and they sit down and they listen to them. And you know what they say? When you get up, I don't know what word he said. Yeah, they get that because something get too, too real, uh, uh, ritualistic and habit forming. So you go in there and you sit there and say, well, I know he's going to say this. I know he's going to say that. And, and, and. He said, what he talked about? Huh? And it's the same thing we have over here. I ain't nobody going to no, nobody raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand. You know that, that after service talk they asked you to come up and do? When, 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 when Brother James and them, they say, hey, you want to come up here and act, come speak about what the less? And you get up and say, what did they talk about? Go, go, ask me a question. And you going off in, in left field somewhere, and, and he, they, they talked about deliverance, and, and you talking, uh, they had the pardon of the water with more. Wait a minute. You're not listening with the ears of your mind. And that's what he said. He said, when Jesus spoke, he said, they were listening with the ears of their mind. What he's saying is, you're saying this, we heard it before, but now we're getting understanding. We get in revelation, and, and it's, it's when you're talking to somebody about something, and you explain it to them, and they got that puzzled look on their face, and when you say that one word, they say, now nah, I got it. Yeah, 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 now nah, I know what you, and that's what happened to these people. They pressed after Jesus, because when he talked to them, they was able to understand and unravel what they'd been hearing for years and years, 
And he say, now we get it. Now we see it. Just like when you was in class and they explaining that algebra to you. Yeah. Yeah. And he say, oh, 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 it's the variable. Oh, yeah. We got, okay, now I know what I'm looking for. But that understanding of the mind. Now, that's not salvation. But I understand. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, that, that don't mean I'm saved, but it means that I understand what you're saying. I, I, I understand the cause. And he's saying, I need you to take me at my word. Look, look, look at the next word. That word where you see, pressed him to hear the word. He's talking about logos. That's with uh, to speak a word of expression. That, that, that's, I'm getting knowledge. Jesus was giving out. Let, let me tell you what this meant. Let me tell you what the expression. You know how he did with the parables? He said, I know you heard this, but let me explain it to you. Yeah. So now they're getting that, that logos word. It's the expression of intelligence. Ah, the light came on. I understand things going good. Yes, sir. We understand it. But you got to understand that, that, that Jesus know how to work things that we, you know, we, we don't know how to do. Okay. He know how to speak to people and, and they, 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 it's like they was magnetized. They, 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 wanted to, they wanted to hear. And now, now, this is just my opinion. Don't write this down. But I think Jesus was either a baritone or a bass. He could have been a tenor, but I, if we had Ed, he was a, he was a, yeah, he, he was a bass. And you see that, that guy, he said, whoa, that, that voice. And they tell, that's just my opinion. So that, but, but the way he talked, he, he grabbed their attention, their attention and he said, we got to hear more. We got to hear more. Some of y'all, let me, let me get to what some of y'all, y'all, y'all know when that first, that record y'all heard, and you, you sound, hopefully it was gospel. Let's put that out there. And you say, I want to hear it again. So you keep playing it over and over. It's not like when we had the eight tracks. That when it played, that one time you had to let that thing go all the way around before you're going to get to it again. And then they came out with the cassettes so you could play it and then hit rewind and wind it back. And sooner or later, guess what? That little tape broke. Because you kept what? Rewinding it. And then they got to the CDs. You go, oh, we can just select the number. Then put. It kept going. And now they, they got, I don't know, them iPod, AirPod. They, you can just program it to keep repeating over and over. And the song just keep going over and over. But that's the thing. When you hear something that's good, you want to hear it what? Over and over again. But these people press. Now, when, when we, we look at press, uh, uh, we, we look at our people and our situation. Why some people press and some don't? What makes some people press and some don't? And, and we all know that because we all weren't pressing after God at one time. You can, you can just go back a few years and, and, you know, some of us older, we can go back a few decades and say, yeah, I, I know why I wasn't, I wasn't pressing. We, we, we know it because you know what? If, if, if some things that hinder us from pressing is one, the lack of knowledge. Sometimes we, we just don't know no better. We, we, we come up and, and we get in a, a, a religion or, or our mama religion, our daddy, and they did the same thing and you say, that, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, that, but that's not me. You never, you never connect. And, and you, you never have the knowledge of what Christ really is. So, you, you know, you never can press after something you don't know and you can't love nothing that you don't know. I don't know. I, you know, they show these people on TV. Oh, they, they, when they pay, they say, everybody loved them. I didn't love them. I didn't know them. But that's, that's the way it, it goes. But we press after things sometimes because we don't know. Sometimes uh, we don't press because we're blessed. You, you, you ever notice that now, none of y'all, none of y'all, I'm talking about them other people that's not here, that's not pressing. So, so if you're not here, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Secure, get, get, give me cover, bear. Yeah. So the, the thing is that when you get what you was after from God, you're leaving. When, when, you know, you know when, you, when, you, when you're sick, really sick, oh, Lord, if you heal me. Oh, Jesus, I'm, I'm the pain. Oh, Lord, just me. And then he here, you get your health, you're going to start working two jobs now. Oh, I can't, I can't go to church. I got, I'm, I'm working two jobs. Because you know what? We, we, we got what we wanted from him. 
And, and, and then we, 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 we so blessed, we say, I don't, oh, go to church? Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, uh, let's see, what the time we go? We gonna go to Easter for Easter? We gonna go for uh, Christmas? Oh, Mother's Day, we can't, we can't miss Mother's Day because I wanna, I wanna have, wear my white or put the, no, no, no. You're not pressing after God, because you know why? I got too much. And sometimes God, well, not sometimes, God knows our heart, he said, if I give it to you, I won't see you on Sunday. If I give it to you, I won't see you on Tuesday. And we look at it, why, Lord, why are they all blessed? Why do they have this here? Why? Because they know how to press. And we don't know, we, 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 we fail to press after God like, like, we, like we should. Another reason why we don't press, because we don't know the benefits. We don't know how good it is to, 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 to press after God and him pressing after us. It, it, it's like a, a, a love-love relationship. When, when, when people love and, and they express say, well, you know what, I saw this, I'm gonna buy it for you. And then when you get home, you find out that your spouse said, well, I saw this and I, I bought this for you. And so now y'all going back and forth, you know why? Because the love, because of the benefits. I don't, I, don't, I don't have to worry about this one or worry about that because you know what? There's benefits in me pressing after God, pressing after the word. Now, now you, you, you know in the, in the Bible when, when, when Jesus fed the 5,000 and the next day they were following him again, they wanted that fish sandwich again. Well, Jesus gave it just a fish sandwich. That was just bread and they ain't had no meal, no mustard. This time maybe gonna have pickles on that. We gonna follow him because we pressing after him for our physical gain. And, and they, they're not after him for the word. But these people here say, the Bible say, he, they pressed him for the word. They, I, I wanna know what you, I wanna know what you know. I want, I want you to explain this to, I want you to talk to me again. Because guess what? It was something that clicked in their mind that they say, I gotta know more about this Jesus. Now Jesus is setting the stage because you gotta get some disciples. You gotta keep that in mind. But can you take him at his word? Look at verse two and he say, I, he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. When I read that, I said, well, we can skip verse two. That, he just talking about the two people that, that, that and I say, everything he put in there, he put in there for a reason. Yes, sir. But I gotta find a reason. We, we got to learn how to dig. He say, this is just not arbitrary because he don't do stuff that, well, I'm just going to do. Why I put that in? I saw two ships by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and they were washing their nets. Okay, they, they, the ships parked by the, in, by the edge of the water. The men over there washing their nets. And Jesus said, he, he, he go to the, he said, hmm, I got to get to preaching. So I need a, a boat. But look what he did in verse three. Keep that in mind, because we're going to come back. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, which that's not arbitrary, and prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. Two ships. Why he didn't get in the other ship? Because it wasn't Simon. He knew which ship he wanted to get in. So he got in Simon's ship. Now, Simon is washing his nets. It, it actually is uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, but we, we, for the purpose that we're gonna use the name they use, he, he, they, washing, they washing the net. So he gets up and go get in the boat. And he asks Simon, you know, to use his boat. But I don't want you to just use it. I want you to launch out a little Amen. from the land so I can sit and teach. I said, now nah, he got, he wanted to get Simon on the boat. So he got in Simon's boat and said, could you, now, if, if you know it's a ship, it's not no P-roll like we got in the bayou, it's, he on a ship. So he already hired in them, but he said, just launch out a little so I can speak to the people. Now, it could have been hundreds, could have been thousands, but there was all that, and he got Peter, get on the boat and just push me out. Cause that's Peter boat, Peter the captain. Yeah, captain don't let this anybody, you ain't gonna just take my boat and go drive it nowhere. He said, he got Peter on the boat. So now Peter no longer, they no longer washing their nets because they gotta launch the boat out just a little while for Jesus. 
And, and it, it led me to say, you see, you know what? We got to be smarter in drawing people. We got kids. Most of us, well, I got some older kids, but I, they, they, I got grandkids. I'm working on them now. But anyway, for the men, you got daughters. Why don't you take, if you tell them, look, I need to talk to you. They're going to say, oh, goodness. But if you tell them, let's go to breakfast. And after breakfast, you know, we'll, we'll walk around the store. We'll, we'll go, guess what? You're going you're gonna to draw them in, and then you'll be able to talk to them with whatever you want. Because you know what? You done put them in a position where they're with you. Jesus wanted Peter or, or Simon with him, so he said, you know what? Huh. I'm going to get him on the boat, but he's going to be on the cool. Just, just launch out a little bit. So he got him. Now, now he got Peter right where he wanted him. He got him right where he wanted him. He said, now, look what he said then. And he said, he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. I thought about that too. Now, how big a crowd you think would appear? Well, we, we don't have the, you, you, y'all, y'all who, who interested in that stuff, watch the, the National Con- Voting Convention, whatever they call that, the okay. DNC. You see all the people they have in there? Yes. And with all outside, we, you ain't getting into the place full, but they're still standing out there. And they want to hear, I, I, I think Obama going to be talking. So they crowding up, they, they want to hear. They're all excited, every news station is over. Here we have the Son of God speaking, and the people want to hear. They, they, they come. Can, can you imagine God speaking to you. This, this is, the, the Bible says, and in, in, in John, he said the word, pull that up, John, uh, uh, one and one. Most of us know. Most of us know. Let, how many of y'all can recite John one and one? Well, I got one over there that said he can recite. Y'all, John one and one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. The same was in the beginning. But you have to keep going. Go to verse 2. Look what verse 2 said. Pull up verse 2 on that. And the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. And all things that were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Keep that in mind. And verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now, y'all keep that verse in mind because we're going to come back to it. Now, here you got God speaking to you. Now, the thing is, every word he said is true. He, he, he's the God, he, he, he don't lie. Every word he got, got power in it. Every word he says got authority in it. You, and we wonder why, the, why they were magnetized, why they were drawn to him. If somebody had a voice like that, that everything you, 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 you say, and you say, wow, the wow. You, his, his voice was so captivated, it was so mad. To hear the truth constantly, everything coming out of his mouth was true, it was true, it was true. And you, you say, we never heard the truth like that. Everything that everybody ever told you, always they say, yeah, maybe so, maybe. But here, God is speaking. The Son of God is speaking to him face to face, and every word is true, and they get to hear it. And they get to sit there with amazement and say, Why does this sound like this? Why, does, why, does it, why is his voice like that? Why, why does it touch us like that? Because it was the voice of God speaking to him, and he wasn't just speaking, he was teaching them. Amen. We're learning something from him. How many of y'all remember y'all first grade teacher? He taught you how to write, hopefully, your ABC. I knew how my ABC. We still remember, I still remember Miss Lane. I don't know, it's just something about the first grade. I, I didn't care for school much anyway, but I, I remember my teacher. First and forward, I definitely remember. But, but to have a teacher that always told you the truth, always said what was real, always said what was right, always was telling you something that's going to benefit you. Everything he said was helpful to you, and that was the teacher. But I wonder, I, I wanted to find, I say, do we know what he taught him? It's not like w- when, when uh, one of the uh, deacons or ministers taught about 
uh, uh, the Beatitudes here, and Jesus began to talk, and he told them to be, well, we know what he taught them. He taught them Beatitudes. But here, they don't say what he taught. They don't tell us what he was saying. But as we look through the line, we start to break it down. Guess what? We get to see that what he was teaching them had to deal with faith. What he was teaching them had to deal with trust. What he was teaching them was saying, can you take me at my word? We hear it and he said, ah, can I believe that? Let's keep going. Look what he said. And verse four, now we begin. He said, and now when he had left speaking, now when he had left speaking, I better turn the page. If I forget, I ain't going to know where I'm at. Now he turned the page. He, we turn the page and look at this. He said, now when he had be, we left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. He turned to Simon. See, he had to get Simon on the boat. Other than that, he would have stayed, oh, you want to use, yeah, go up there and when we finish our net, we're going home. We've been fishing all night. We're going home when we get through with this here. But he, he, he said, no, you ain't going to go home because you got I want you to launch out a little so I can speak. And then now, now after he, he launched, got him to launch out a little, he said, now launch out into the deep. Now, most of the time when, I, when, I, when I've heard this priest or say, you know what they say? It's time for us to get out of shallow water. We got to go out into the deep. And a lot of people barely jump at that. That's, that's, that's for me. I'm, I'm going into the deep. But if you read the scripture, go back and say, and he taught. And after he finished teaching, he turned to Simon and said, launch out into the deep. Some of us jumping in deep water and we ain't taught to swim. We, 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 we haven't been taught. But we, 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 we look and see, well, I, I, I see they got a catering business. I like to cook, I'm going to and you jump out there. Come on, minister. Got two pots, a fork, no spatula, and you look at them and say, cooking all too high. But you don't jump down. You, you, got, you got to be taught. What, what you going to cook? You can't cook. Well, I want to cater. And what you going to cook? One thing? Every time they call you, what are we going to have? Oh, we're going to have rice and gravy. I don't want no rice and gravy. Well, you better get another cater. <laughs> don't launch out until you get taught. And even if you can cook, you say, well, I can cook a variety of things. But do you know business? Do, do you know accounting? Can you keep a record? You, when, when, when the IRS is going to come and say, well, what was your income? Huh? Well, we'll make up something since you, you can't figure out. And then you say, by the way, now you owe us 15600 And we need it in 30 days. Because you know why? You never was taught. We, 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 we get caught up sometime, and I think it's an emotional thing, when you say, we launch out into the deep. You, 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 gotta, you gotta go deep. Everything is found, the, the best is found in the deep. But you gotta be taught how to get in the deep. You gotta be prepared to come up out of the deep. It's good to go deep. It's good to go into that. Yeah, but are you prepared? And the sequence is, you gotta be taught first. Taught, and then launch out. And then you have to have a word. Can you take him at, at your word? It, it, we see people doing things and say, I can do that. And you jump out there and start. You jump out there and go, oh, I can do that. I, and I can do it. And then you find out, ooh, I don't know. This ain't as easy as I thought. And now you, you, you under the weight of jumping into something that's over your head. Launch out in the deep, but it was only after he had been taught. Now, the teaching part we don't like. That's too long. This, this, this for, this for our, uh, our young people that's in school. We got to go to school at 7 o'clock, and we don't get back home till 3 o'clock. That's too long. And you never consider that your parents work from 7 o'clock to five o'clock and then they have to deal with you and then they have to prepare for tomorrow, make sure you're ready for tomorrow. And if you don't want that, you better get you a good job. 
You need that education. You need to learn to say, you know what? I want to be better than my parents. How many parents want their children better than them? That, 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 that's what, we don't, we don't, when you say, well, they're doing a good, well, my, my mama's doing good, my daddy, they want you better. They want you to take where they're, where they're at now and go up higher. It, 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 if, 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 if you reach higher and you fall where they are, guess what? You're still on good ground. But if you just want to be where they are and you miss it, you below, they're going to say, you, you never met up to your potential. You, you better. We have to learn how to be taught because we don't know everything. No matter who you know, they're they going to know so much. And guess what? They got to go back. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to do that. And that's the thing that's not uh, uh, embarrassing to say. I don't know how. But I want to be taught. I need a word. Now, when, he, when, when, when Jesus gave him this, Simon answered. Now, let, let's what he said. Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. That's what Jesus said. And Simon answered and said to him, Master. Look at that respect. We have toiled all night and have caught nothing. Let's stop right there. How many of us got an excuse for what Jesus asked us to do? How many of us have given Jesus the excuse? It, it comes easy. I'm, oh, I'm tired. And he gave him a word and the first thing Peter said was, Master, I'm going to show you respect. Master. You, you, you know, you a teacher. Uh, I, I know your profession. You grew up a carpenter. Now, if you tell me how to use a T-square, I'm going to go along with it. You tell me how to hang sheetrock, you, you good at that. If you want me to tell me where the main beam is on the wall and what's going to support, that's good. You know how to make cabinets. That's, that's a good thing because you're a carpenter. You, you, Joseph was a carpenter. He trained you to be a carpenter. But I'm a fisherman. And I fished all night. Because the nighttime is when you catch the fish. Where, 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 Big John, jumping fish don't, don't bite, right? Oh, yeah, jumping fish. You go, and, and that, that, that's something between me and John. I, we was talking, I told him, he said, I went fishing. I said, you ain't caught nothing. He said, how come? I said, it was a full moon. He said, yeah, I, the, the fish, they eat at night. It's a full moon. They're they, they eating at night when the water is cool, especially in the sun. The water cooler. They, oh, yeah. When, the sun, when in the middle of the day when it get hot, them fish say, oh, no, we, we, we ate last night. We don't need to eat now. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, Peter knew this. He said, we, 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 you a carpenter, I'm a fisherman. Carpenter, fisherman. The carpenter telling the fisherman to go. Something don't sound right about that. And sometimes, you know what we think? Our opinion is the only opinion that matters. You know, I've been doing this for 35 years. You know, I've been at this a long time. And, you know, I've written books about this. And I've, I've discussed it with some of the college professors. And now you're trying to tell tell. My opinion is the only one that matters. Why, why, why are we like that? And, and, and let me help my, my, my students out since I told them they need, to be, uh, they need to be glad to be taught in school. Parents, you know what? When, when, and, and we did this, me and my wife, we did this sometime, but we, told, we did just like what, what Peter did. We said, look, look, y'all, we're going to talk. And y'all can say how y'all feel about something. But you're going to say it with respect. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't going to cross that line. Now. But, but we, we want, I want to hear your opinion. I want to see how you, what you feel about stuff. I want to hear what you think about it. And I think if we, as parents, we can set them down and say, look, I, wanna, I, I, I know what I, what's right. I know what's going to do. But tell me your opinion. Give them an opportunity to speak and say, this is how I feel about it. And then you can go on from that. You can go on from how, 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 how they feel and what they Show them to, how to maneuver life without having organ or uh, without being dominant. You gonna do what I say and that's it, that's it. Now that uh, mama say, I said it, that's it. Yes, sir. But we came up on a different time. <laughs> you see, there, there, mama had a belt, she could whip. Now you, you holler at a child. We're taking that child, we're gonna arrest you for, for a child abuse, you're hollering at them. <laughs> 
but that, that, that's the society we live in. But the, the thing is, give them an opportunity to express themselves. Now, when you read this thing, you say, well, okay, Peter looked at it and said, I'm going to give you my opinion. I did tall, tall all night. I didn't just fish. I worked. This, this, because you got to understand, they was throwing nets out. They ain't had these big machines that they got now that shoot the net out and then they pull it back in. All the guy got to do is say, no, they had to grab and pull and pull. And they throwing that heavy net out, pulling, pulling, and come back with nothing. Now here Jesus come back and say, uh, launch out a little in the deep and then throw your nets out for a draw. Peter gives his excuse. Now, you think Peter was heart, heart was in that? You think Peter felt like, a, I just cleaned my nets. I done been out here for 12 hours throwing this thing out here, and he, th he did, but he said, nevertheless, Amen. I will because of your word. He said, I will because, now, now, and you know what we tell people all the time? Well, if your heart ain't in it, don't do it. Or well, if you don't feel like it, then don't do it. But this here caused a, 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 to us to put a pause on that because your heart not in it. And we read all the time that your heart is deceitful, it'll, it'll wicked, it, it'll fool you every time. Think about how many, uh, both male, think of how many times you thought you was in love and they walked off. Because you felt it in your heart. Oh, my heart burning when they come. It's hot. Ooh, I, I, and the next thing you know, they don't walk off. Your, your heart will fool you. Yes, sir. And Peter's heart was fooling him. It, 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 his heart wasn't it. Go through the net out there again. He said, nevertheless, at your word. At your word. Now that word, that word is rhema. Amen. That rhema word is, is, is a, a right now word. It's a command. Yeah. Jesus said, launch out. He didn't ask him, Peter, if, let me see. He didn't say, Peter, if you don't mind. Could you launch a little? No, he gave him a command. Yes, sir. When God gives us a command, it's not an option. He said, launch out in the deep. And then he told him for a draw. You're going to pull some fish in. He said, ain't no fish out there, man. We came out. We've been out there all night. And, but he said, at your word, I will. How many of us, when God tells us, we say, I will? Yes, sometimes. If it feel good to us, if we think it's going to work, because you know, we got pills and paper, yeah. We know how to reason. Let me write this down. Jesus told me, go, go do that. Let me see. Now no, I got this, and do like Jethro Bodine, north from north. And he said, look like I don't have the money all the time to do that. I, 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 I ain't going to do it. But at his word, he gave us a command. At his word, he said, at my word, Go do it. Peter said, nevertheless, I'm going I'm to go ahead and do it. Now, my question is this. How did fish know? He didn't say, you, you remember when he talked to the wind? He said, wind, be still. He, he talked, to, when the demons started talking, he said, shut up. They heard him. And, but he didn't say, fish, I want you all to come over here. And I, I read them commentaries, and one of them said, he told the fish. I said, oh, man, where'd you get that from? He ain't told them fish nothing. <laughs> Then you know you got to dig a little deeper sometime. But as I read, I say, now Jesus was on the water teaching. And he said, go get, go launch out for a draw. What he was, what he was say, draw what? Draw a fish. You're gonna draw the fish out. So when he said it, them fish ain't had no choice. Amen. They, 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 they had to come. But when, 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 when he, because they came, I said, well, where else Jesus did that for? Y'all, y'all, we all know the story of Lazarus. Uh -huh. Lazarus was dead four days and Jesus said, come forward. How Lazarus hear him if he did? <laughs> I said, well, that, that, that's, that's one I, I read in Luke 7. And when in your own time, you can go to Luke 7, 11 through 14 or 15. Do you remember that widow and Nan was going to bury her son? And Jesus, they ran at the at Jesus coming in and they going out the gate, and Jesus see her weeping, and he tell her, you know, don't no, don't cry. He goes up and put his hand on a coffin, and young man, get up. Amen. And the man pop up out the out the coffin, 
We'd have emptied the place. We, we'd have, it, but, but how can a dead man hear what he, what he said? The power that Jesus had when he created, when he said, and the word, when he spoke, he spoke life. You remember that verse I told you to read in John and 4? He said, and the, the, the life of life, when he speak, things happen. It, it's, not, it's not an option. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So when he put his hand on him, life touched death, and death had to leave, and life came back. Because in him was, a, and he just come and he he get up, and like I said, we we saw that, but that's a different generation. They was expecting miracles like that. If somebody go lay on coffin and, and the body get up. Don't be standing by that door. <laughs> but will you take him at his word? To to us, that oh no, he been dead. I I, I that that you, we say we now we say if he said it, we would be believing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do y'all really believe it? Let somebody there and they put their hand on it. They say, hold up, hold up. We, I, no, we, we gonna go. If he said it, we gonna believe it. We say if he said it, that settled it. And I, I, we ain't got no question. But you gotta search out. Do you really believe? When you saying that, do you really believe it? When he tells you you're gonna be the head and not the tail, do you really believe that? Do, do you really believe? I'm gonna take him at his word. That's what he's saying. Take me at my word. Peter did that. Now, I, 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 another question coming. Let's, let's keep reading. Verse 6, look what he said. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net was about to break. The net breaking, they got so many fish. Yes, now, a question comes up. You know, we got to ask question when the, Why Jesus give so many fish that the net breaking, and that just, it just Simon. It's just one man, and you know he can't get all them fish. I, got, I, I might have an answer for you. First of all, when he asked Simon to use his boat, <coughs> you remember how many times Pastor done stood up here before tithes and offering and said, God not, there's no way God gonna let you out doing. He said, no way he gonna let you out doing. So Peter comes in and says, yeah, you can use my boat. Yeah, he said, well, I need you to launch out. So Peter said, okay, I'm going to launch out a little bit. So Peter done his part for God. God said, and Jesus saying, well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a blessing for that. Amen. But keep reading. Look at he said, and they beckoned unto another partner which was out there. So now he got enough for two ships Amen. and they both about to sink. Yeah. Why two ships? Come on, okay, for that one, the first ship for Peter's ship, he said, well, Peter, since you, you gave me something, the use of your boat, I'm going to bless you back. I'm going to bless you with a, 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 a boatload of fish. But also, Peter, you did something else. You took me at my word. Yeah. Because you took me at my word, I'm going to give you overflow. I'm going to give you abundance of the... Now, Peter, Peter got all this stuff. He said, oh, what I'm going to do? Peter said, now, nah, now, nah, I'm... I'm God is searching to say, I'm, I'm seeing what you're doing, Peter. What you, what you going to do? Peter said, call somebody else. Let them have some. I got overflow. If God bless us with overflow, what are we going to do? We're going to do like the man with the bond. Mm, I got to build a bigger bond. Peter could say, well, uh, let me borrow your net. I don't need your boat. Just get your net. I need to switch it. No, he said, get another boat because you know what? I got more than enough. And, and sometimes we want favor, but favor has a purpose. Favor has a purpose. We got a test. He gave him a test after he taught him. How many of us went to school and, and after they taught him, they said, test Friday. I'm giving you a test. I'm a teacher. I got you on the boat for a reason. I got it. He got Peter on the boat. He taught Peter. Because Peter, Peter, I'm on the boat. I might as well sit here and listen. Now I get the word. Now did, did the word get in you, Peter? Simon, did you get the word? I believe I got it. Well, let's see if you got it. Launch out in the deep. Amen. We fish all night. We ain't got nothing. Oh, you must have been taught, teaching about take me at my word. So I'm a, because of your word, I'm going to launch out. I'm going to throw the net. When the stuff come in, Peter said, now nah, I got more than enough. But I got to do something else. I got to share this thing. Yes, and after he shared it, he said, it's too much for me. How many of us going to take our overflow and share it? 
That's, that's what the person, we, we like, oh Lord, I, I want favor, God give me favor. Don't tell me about how much stuff you got if you ain't willing to share, I don't need to hear about that. Oh man, I, I, mean, I, got, I got all of this, uh, okay, oh, man, I, can't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all, and I'm standing there with my mouth, oh, yeah. you, you ain't gonna share? And then you wonder why the blessing got cut off, why the fountain got cut off. And he did what God, he did what God asked him to do, God blessed him. He listened to God's word, God blessed him. Now this is, this is, this is the, the end, we're coming to the end. Look what he said. And when Peter saw it, verse eight, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinner, man, oh, oh I'm a sinner man, oh Lord. Jesus exposed who he was and Peter looked at righteousness and he looked at himself. He said, I'm undone. I'm a sinner. Don't, don't. I, I, I shouldn't even be. Now, most of us would have said, you know what? Man, move out the way. I got to get my fish to the dock. I got to get this fish. And I, I, th th Peter looked at himself. It was a, a, a conversion took place. Peter saw what he was, he took the word of God and he applied him to himself. He said, well, everything that he taught me, everything that he said, this got to be the son of God. Who can, who can command fish to come when I know the fish ain't supposed to be there? This is not the time of day for that many fish, that big a fish to be in that water and he said so. How many of us have took, looked at the blessing of God and counted it for nothing. How many of us that took what he done, where he brought us and said, boy, I, I've done a real good job. I, I made it, my education got me here. My, my wisdom got me here. My skills got me here. That's not what got you. When you can be obedient to the word of God, guess what? He'll show you favor. He'll show you blessing. He'll put you in a position where you can bless other people. So whenever, whenever you start talking about, Lord, I want favor, I want to be blessed, Make sure you're thinking about who you can help with that blessing. Don't, don't, don't just get blessed to be greedy, to be selfish, like, like, like sometimes it's in our people. That's why we pull each other down. That's not what he wants. He said, you know what? I, I, I want to be, and then he looked, he said, I'm undone, I'm a sinner. How many of us willing to face the mirror and say, I'm the sinner? Or we look at other people and say, if they wouldn't have done this, if they wouldn't have said that. You think that people made, your, your spouse, I'm gonna use that. You think your spouse made that come out your mouth? Made you act like that? There's a conversion that has to take place. You have to do like Peter. You have to say, I am a sinner. It's me. He took a blessing, an overflow, and the conclusion was, I'm a sinner. He took favor, he took grace that God had showed him and said, I'm a sinner. Because you see, to Peter, his heart was more important than the fish. His soul was more important than the fish. Well, how, how, why do you come to that conclusion? How, how you can come to that conclusion? We're going to say this and we're going to go. Look like he, he said, for he was astonished in verse nine, for he was astonished all that, that, that were with him and the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto to Simon, fear not, from hence thou shalt, be, thou shalt catch men. Verse 11, and when they had brought their ship to land, they forsook all and followed him. I get the biggest blessing that I could imagine in my profession and I'm willing to walk off and leave it for Christ. How many of us like, like that? I, I, I'd have made it to the top. I'm going to be president of this, this situation. I'm the boss. I'm the big boss with the applesauce, the big pomale, the cheese. I'm the one they're going to buy it out and say, Matthew, and you're able to say, I'll leave it all for Christ. Some of us won't leave one job. We won't come to church on time for Christ. But, but, but Peter was willing to give away all that. Well, it's raining. 
I can't come. It's too hot out there. I can't come. I got to work in the morning. I ain't coming. You don't know how to press for the word. When, when we fail to press for the word, we hinder our blessing. Because you know what? Jesus could have found any other men, but he found men that was working. He found men that was doing something. He found all it. He didn't find, well, well, what you doing? I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just laying around. Well, you want to be a disciple? No. He found the one that was working, that was reaching out, that was pressing. And all we can say about Peter, we remember Peter, somebody say, Peter, oh yeah, he denied Christ three times. But how many of us would be like Peter would leave a good job and follow Christ? Not, not when it's broke. We, we, I, I, leave, I leave if it ain't getting, I ain't getting paid, I ain't getting no money. Yeah, I leave. But this thing, now nah, he, he, got, he got a multitude. The ship is about to sink, he got so many fish. And he said, for the cause of Christ, I leave it. And we can't get to church on time for the word. We can't stay long enough for after service, say, let me tell you what God has done for me, what I got out of this message. I see them come up all the time, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I, they didn't ask me, I'm just, I'm just saying it because it needs to be. James, them come up here, hey, they, they got to run, you want to say it, you want, and you say, well, why do they get the same people? Because they're the only one that listen with their mind. They're listening with their spirit. But we got to be able to do the same thing. You got to say, here am I, send me, I'll do it. I'll go. I got some. This, this word was for me. We all want a, a rhema word. You know when you want a rhema word? When you're in trouble. Oh, Lord, tell me what to do right now. Uh, They're going to they gonna cut my lights off. Send somebody. To, I, wanna, I need a rhema word. You can't beat them to church. Uh, uh, Minister Ann talked about the prayer closet. You got knee prints all in it when you're broke. But what about when you're blessed? Can you do like, can you do like Peter? I'm blessed and I'll leave it for the cause of Christ. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for some that are put all aside for him. How you know that? Because he said, if you're not willing to forsake mother, father, brother, sister for me, you're not fit for the kingdom. We want to be fit. We want we, we to be the one to say, Lord, you can, you can use me. Let's bow our head. Father, we thank you for this night and we thank you that we unwrapped ourselves and seeing that we fall short in so many places because we don't press for your word. But I pray right now tonight, Lord, that, that if there's anybody here that's not saved and they heard this word, that they'll say, I need to hear from God. I need to be like Simon. I need to admit that I'm a sinner because I believe that he is the savior and I'm willing to confess it with my mouth that I need him. But Lord, as I, 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 as I and so many are here, Lord, we fail to press for your word. We fail to pray some morning. We fail to press some, pray some days at all. We fail to read your word because we say, I don't understand. But Lord, give us revelation now. Forgive us first, Lord, for shorting you and all you've done for us. We thank you right now for loving us in spite of our shortcoming, in spite of our faults. But tonight, we, we, we want to make a difference. We want to press for your word because there's so many benefits knowing that you love us and we love you. Lord, we pray right now that you touch our hearts and where we have fallen short, Lord, forgive us. Where we need building up, Lord, build us up so we can once again hunger and thirst after righteousness. And Father, as I pray that there's anybody that needs salvation, Lord, that you would touch their heart and let them know all they got to do is admit that they've sinned. Believe that you are the son of God and willing to confess it and you will save them. Lord, I pray this blessing over all of us. And Lord, as we leave this place but never your presence, be our strength, be our guide, be our comforter. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Love y'all.